transformations of fun function graphs. Now, you guys worked with this a little bit last year. Um, your focus was probably on either uh, polygons of some kind or on parabolas. But you did some shifting, some reflecting, some rotating, some dilating, all that kind of stuff last year. We are going to focus today on shifting, okay? Um, tomorrow we will focus on a little bit of dilation type stuff, kind of. Um, it's a little bit different than the dilation I think you did last year. Um, we like to call it stretching and compressing stuff. Um, we will also do reflecting. We will not be doing rotating, okay? I know that's usually one of the harder ones for my M2, but we're not doing rotating. Um, but today, hopefully, we're going to get a good handle on shifting, translating is what it's called. All right, so we're going to move functions around. A relationship, or a function is a relationship between a set of values where each input has exactly one output. That's best illustrated, I think, by the vertical line test that you probably dealt with a little bit last year. We'll talk about that more later. Um, input values are represented by x. Output values are represented by y, or more commonly, we call it f of x. Now, I think I talked before about the fact that f of x is a way of naming an equation. Because if I just wrote a bunch of equations like y equals um, x plus 4, y equals x minus 5, y equals x plus 2, how do we talk about one equation in comparison to the other ones if they're all y equals? So we change that name so that one of them is f of x, one of them is g of x, one of them is h of x, and we can say, oh, well, f of x is just like g of x except for the fact that it's been shifted such and such. Okay, so it's just a way of naming it differently, these little letters. They don't have different meaning, just different names. So we are going to learn a lot over the next several days about this equation right here. And that looks like a very long and confusing equation, right? Um, and it is a little bit long and confusing, but it's something that you are going to become so incredibly familiar with because we're going to be using it over and over and over and over again. Now, we will get to a point where we're going to drop this letter F out because remember, F is just the name of something. Once we know what that something is, we don't need to put the F there to name it. Um, but we're going to focus on A, B, H, and K. All right? So if I look at these two equations here in my first example, I see f of x, do you see the f of x? And then we have a new equation, g of x, and another one called h of x. And they're both taking f of x and doing something to it. So what letter from my formula up here is that 4 in the place of? Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Is that a, b, h, or k? k. What tells you it's k? It's at the very, very end, and it's not in any kind of parentheses, right? Very end, no parentheses, very end, no parentheses. That means it's my k value. What do we need to know about k? Well, k is what we call a vertical shift. What does vertical mean? up and down. So k is going to take the original graph. This is the graph of f of x, by the way. That's the original one that we're starting with. And if you could click and drag this, k would move this up or down. It would not change how wide it is. It would not change how skinny it is. It would not change its shape at all. It would literally just move up or down. All right? So, if I have a k value of positive 4, what do you think that's going to do for me? It's going to move it up. How much is it going to move it up? 4. Now, uh, Mrs. Armstrong typed in this, this uh, table because she likes to see that from her students, this table of values. I personally prefer just to go straight to the graph. So I'm going to kind of bypass this part, if that's okay with you, and just focus on those equations. They're written again down here. So here we have a k value of 4, 
And that means we are going to shift how? Up four. So I'm going to come over here. A parabola typically has five main points that we see on the graph. We have the vertex. It looks like we have two points here and here. Do you see where I'm getting those points from? They're right where the grid lines intersect and the graph passes through it, right? They happen to be the same points that she has listed over here. Okay, those are the points I'm going to focus on, and I'm going to take each one of those points. I'm not going to do anything to it as far as left and right is concerned. I am simply going to move it up four. So if I take this point and I go one, two, three, four, that's its new location. If I take this point and move it up four, one, two, three, four, that's its new location. If I take this point, move it up four, one, two, three, four, this one, one, two, three, four, this one, one, two, three, four. That is what the graph looks like. <laughs> My goodness. Is that actually Yes. Um, now, my last class was saying that looks smaller. It looks like it shrunk a little bit. The only reason it looks smaller is because we can't see it widening out up further. If we could see a bigger snippet of that picture, it, we would notice it's the same size. It's just been moved. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Good answer. All right. Let's look at the next one, h of x. I'm going to look at it down here. This time, what is my k value? Negative 2. So how do you think that's going to shift it? Remember, it's still a vertical shift, so my only options are up or down. If k is negative, we are going to shift down. And how far are we going to shift down? Two spots. Now, do I take the one that I just graphed? It's hard for you to see, but that's blue. Do I take the blue one and shift it down too, or do I go back to the original one and shift it down too? The original. If I was going to take the blue one and shift it down to, what would this have to say? Do you know? It would have to say G of X because G of X is the name of the blue graph. F of X is the name of the, the black one, the original one. Does that kind of make sense? And now I'm doing the red one. This one's going to be named what? H of X. So going back to my original points on that original graph, I'm going to take each one and simply go down two, down two, down two, down two, down two, and draw it in. And there's my graph shifted down two. So, so? Yeah? Okay, next it says write and graph a I'm not going to graph it, but what if I wanted to say, show me the equation of a function that, or, that takes f of x and translates it down 6. So let's name this new function. We've already used g of x, h of x, and f of x. What should I use? I'm not going to use i of x because i is like imaginary numbers. That's weird. Let's call it j of x. Just give it a name. And it takes the original function, f of x, and how would I show that it is translated down 6? I would put minus 6. That's what the equation would look like. And again, I could go graph that, go back to the original graph, and just take each point and move it down 6. Does that make sense? Yes? Good answer. All right, so here's a little summary. K is a vertical shift. When k is positive, or in other words, it's greater than zero, it is a shift what? Up. And when k is negative, or in other words, k is less than zero, it is a shift down. So, so? Okay. Now let's go on to our next letter. Notice these equations look a little different. And again, I'm not going to really pay much attention here. I'm going to focus on it down here. These letters, or I'm sorry, these numbers are not at the end of the problem, not in parentheses. So they can't be K anymore. What can they be? If you look up here, what letter are they? H, because they're in parentheses with the X, right? 
So down here, we're going to be dealing with an h value. So if k is a vertical shift, h is the opposite of that, which means it's a horizontal shift. Now, something that's important to notice. In the equation, what do you notice about h? It's minus. That's going to mess with us a little bit. Because right here, x plus 1 is not a minus sign. If I were to write that as x minus something, what would it have to be minus in order to get plus 1? Wouldn't it have to be like that? So if I write it in the x minus form, like the equation, what is my h value? My h value is actually negative 1. What about this one? This one's in that form. What's my h value here? 2. So with h's, they're in those parentheses. We have to actually change the sign when we take it out of the parentheses because of that right there. Okay, kind of funky. Once I identify h, then it's what I think it is. It is a shift. We have a horizontal shift, which means my only options are left and right. If h is negative, that means I'm going to shift what? Left. And in this case, I would shift left 1, right? If h is positive, I'm going to shift how? Right. And in this case, I would shift right 2. So let's graph those two. I'm going to do the shift left 1. Again, I have my main points, the negative 2, 4, Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Those are my main points. I'm going to start off with the shift left. So I'm going to go left 1, left 1, left 1, left 1, left 1. And it's going to start to look something like that. Okay. And now I'm going to do the other one, which means I'm going to go back to the original f of x graph. That's the black one that was printed on the page. And this one I'm going to shift how? To the right 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Now, it's kind of hard to see that, but if you want to look at it there, that's what it looks like all kind of officially printed on a computer. Okay. Okay. So, let's write a function to show f of x translated left 4. Let's name our next function that we're going to do. We've already used g of x, h of x, and f of x. Let's name it even different than j of x back here. Let's call it k of x. Why not? How would I write it translated left 4? That would be f of what? x inside parentheses or outside parentheses? Left to right has to be inside with the x. And this is an h value of negative 4, correct? Left 4 means h is negative 4. What is an h value of negative 4 going to look like inside the parentheses? plus 4. That's what my equation looks like. Okay, so let's summarize. H is a horizontal shift. When I have something in the form of x minus something, that means I have a positive h value, or in other words, h is greater than 0, and that is a shift right. When I have x plus something, it's actually referring to that. This is how it would show up, though. You have h is negative, or in other words, it's less than 0, which means it's a shift to the left. Now, that always messes with me, because when I see x plus 4, I want to move it 4 in a positive direction. But when it's an h value, I have to remember that it actually means the opposite. Okay? Alright, let's turn the page. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to combine it. We're going to do both a vertical and a horizontal movement at the same time. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you translate it once and graph it and then you translate it again and graph it. You want to do both movements in the same breath, if you will. So we need to write an equation for g of x if we are translating to the right 2 and up 1. Well, the right 2 means I have what as an h value? It's going to be positive 2 because right 2 means positive 2. I just need to remember when I put that in my equation, it's got to be the opposite of that. It's got to be negative 2. If I'm going up 1, what is my k value? 1. So h is left to right, k is up and down. So what's my equation going to look like? g of x is equal to f of what? x, which one goes with x? h is going to go with it, right? It's a positive 2, it needs to look like a minus 2. And then k is plus 1 out at the end. Does that kind of make sense? Good answer. All right. So, if I were to take this, and I were to shift that point, now if I were not to do it on a graph, just a point, to the right 2, well, if I'm talking about a left to right movement, is that going to change my x value or my y value? My x value. So, if I'm moving to the right 2, what is that 3 going to do? I'm going to have to add 2 to it, making it a 5. And if I'm going up 1, that's going to affect my y value, right? So I have to add 1 to my y value. So the point that was 3, 0 right here is going to translate and become the point 5, 1 right there. What about the point zero, uh, zero 03? Sorry, I didn't mean to write it there. Here's the point zero 03, which is kind of the top of the rounded part, how's that going to move? Same way, right 2, which means the new x value is going to be what? 2. And up 1 makes the new y value what? 4. So 2, 4. So I know that we're going to get something like this. That is that part of the graph. What else do I need to move? Don't I need to move like this end so I see where it ends? So I could do this same thing with the points, or I could use the other method. And I could have used the other method use it for those two as well. I just wanted to show you something new. But I could take this point, and I could do what? I could just go right two and up one. And I could have that, done that here too. Right two, up one, right two, up one. And let's draw that in. So there's my semicircle part. And then this part, it should just kind of follow the same slope. I could take another point if I wanted to. If I took this point and I went right two and up one, I can just kind of follow that for my graph. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Let's do the next one. I'm not going to do the points thing. Let's just shift it the way it asks us to shift it. Okay. It says we are going to be going left 2 and down 3. So what does that mean about my h value if we're going left 2? My h is negative 2. And my k value if we're going down 3 is what? Negative 3. So what's my equation going to look like? f of x what? plus 2, that's where I have to change the sign because it's going in parentheses now, and then outside the parentheses, minus 3. Now, I'm not going to do the points part. I'm just going to take the important points on here, and I'm going to move them each left 2 and down 3. So if I take this point right here, and I go left 2 and down 3, it's now right here. What do I know about everything to the left of that point? It's just a straight line. Right? A perfectly horizontal line. Now I'm going to take this point. I'm going to go left 2, down 3. So I know that that goes like that. 
see it coming together a little bit. And this guy, hold on just a second. So I'm gonna pick one other point here. I'm just gonna pick maybe this guy right here. And I'm gonna move him left two and down three to just follow that pattern. And that's what my graph should look like. Okay. Now, when you get to your homework assignment, let me put that up here. When you get to your homework assignment, it's gonna say translate five up and four right. So you're gonna have to take your points and translate them five up, four right, and graph the new one. And then you're gonna have to write the equation just like this of the new one. Does that make sense? So that should be fairly easy. When you've got, I actually like doing polygons better because I think they're easier. It gives me four distinct points to move and it's very simple from there. Um, on the back side, they're giving you one that has already been moved. So write the equation of it. How has it been shifted? Okay, uh, here's the new one. How has it been shifted? Find an important point on the graph and see. Well, if I look at that point, it's moved to here. So it shifted one, two, three, four, five to the left and three up. Put that into the equation. Figure out which one's H, which one's K, and go from there. Okay? Um, now, this last thing. This is that equation that I said you were going to um, get familiar with, right? Yes? Okay, well, what did we learn about today? We learned about K. What is it? It's a vertical shift. When we have a positive K, what does that mean? Shift up. When we have a negative K, what does that mean? Shift down. We also learned about H. H is a what? Horizontal shift. When we have a positive H, what do we do? Shift right. Now keep in mind, a positive H is going to look like what? It's going to look like a negative H in the parentheses. A negative H value means we shift left. And remember, X plus H will look like X minus something in your parentheses, and a negative H will look like an X plus something in your parentheses. Okay. A and B. I don't really want to talk about A and B yet because we don't have anything with A and B. So I'm going to hold off on those other two boxes and we'll fill them in when we start talking about A and B. Okay? All right. Happy studying.